Hi, Paul from Foil Drive here, and I'm excited today to show you the Foil Drive app. We've been working on this for a while, and this is only for Gen 2. Unfortunately, you can't use this on the Gen 1, so it's a Gen 2 product only. And the purpose of this app is to allow you to tune and make changes to your Gen 2 systems, and in future, as we offer uh, updates, uh, power improvements, and features and functions. The app will continue to grow over time and become more feature rich. Look out for future updates. This is just the beginning, and this video is to introduce the app, show you how to use it, and understand why there are different power settings and when you should use them. So, and there will be a separate video about troubleshooting if you're having difficulties with your device connecting. So, let's get into it and let's show you the app. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to use the app and where to get it. So both Android and Apple are supported. So you simply go onto the store, search Foil Drive, it'll pop up and it is a free app to download, no, nothing to pay for. Once you've downloaded it, the first time you use the app, which is what we're gonna go through, it will ask you for some permissions. Once those permissions have been accepted and done, you will not need to do that in the future. So we're gonna go through that now, but just bear in mind, you're not gonna to need to do some of these steps permission activations for the next use. Work with the Macs today. The process is identical for working with a Max or a Slim with how you go through the functions, but I'm just gonna use this one and let's get into it. So first things first, I need to actually power the system on. It doesn't matter what battery you use, as long as it's on. So the Batteries in the unit, controller is off. I am going to test to make sure the propeller doesn't spin so that it's safe. Now, the first thing I want to do is press get started. So I press that. The first thing it asks me is to scan the unit you want to use. So I have a Max here and a Slim over there. I'm going to work with the Max. So I would tilt the unit over and on the side of the unit, there is a QR code. And next to the QR code, there are three letters, F, D, M. The purpose of the QR code is to allow you to use the camera to scan it. And if you don't have that or you're having difficulty scanning the QR code, you can type the letters in. So if I was to manually type the letters in, down the bottom of the page, it says manually enter code. Click on that. I could type in foil drive max and click OK. Or... I can use the camera and I'm going to use the camera. So click on scan. It prompts me to allow access to the camera and some other settings. So I'm going to click on open settings and then I'm going to click on permissions. And that's where it asks me for the permissions allowed to use the app. So I'm going to allow the camera only while using the app, location, it doesn't need microphone. You can put it on anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Nearby permission for devices, that's so I can see the unit and notifications allow. You could put the microphone on, I'm just gonna do it anyway, so they're all done, but you don't need to. Okay, so the permissions have now been selected. You will now, the camera will then turn live. I'm gonna rotate the unit and it, see I didn't even have a chance to rotate the unit and it's already seen the QR code in the corner of the frame, but you know, you would normally just go like that. And it instantly grabs it, it's very quick. The next screen that comes up is scan battery. It's very important that if you have multiple different batteries, that you tell the system what battery you're, you're using so it can give you the appropriate power settings and maps. So scan battery, again, I do have the option for manually enter code, which if I was going to do that, it's written next to the QR code on the battery. In this instance, this is a foil drive max power and it's got FDMP, which stands for foil drive max power. I could manually enter that code or I can just scan it. So I'm just going to scan and boop, there we go. Now it's saying awaiting connection. Just leave your phone as close to the unit as practicable. It needs to be within a foot, 30 centimeters for the metric world um, for best connections. So it's automatically connected. There's a video that comes up on the screen. If I was to press play on that, it's going to play a video and tell you more information about the power settings and other bits and pieces. 
I'm going to go to the next step, which is set up foil drive. So I'm gonna click on that. It brings up four different power modes. So there's learn, low, medium, and high. And that's exactly what they are. So learn is a power setting that I've chosen that is just a good all round, reasonably efficient power setting for learning, not too high, not too low. And then low, medium, high. Low is obviously the lowest power setting, medium, medium, and high is the highest. So I like, I need the power because I'm a heavier person, so I'm gonna collect, select high. Should also be worth noting that all maxes come preset to higher power setting, and uh, so do the slims. The one thing that will be different is boost, and we're gonna get into that. So I've selected high. If I made a mistake and I was like, oh, actually, I really wanted medium, I can click on change, it'll go back. I can click on the new one, and then up comes medium, change, I'm gonna go back to high, and there's a picture of me in Hood River. How cool. Click confirm. Now it goes to the next page. There is boost mode. Boost mode is a function where you say to the system, I want you to apply a percentage number, which you select, on top of the current power mode I've set. So I've selected high, so it's gonna give me maximum thrust, but it will also give me an extra boost of thrust, which is purely designed to allow you to get up and out of the water, especially on smaller boards or smaller wings where you need that extra thrust but it also has a time limit. On the max, it's 15 seconds, and on the slim, it's 12. So if you use full boost, hold the throttle down, and you don't let it go, after 15 seconds, the boost will slowly drift away and it turns off, and it can be reactivated, but there's a, technic there's a time limit. And I'll go into how to activate, deactivate boost a little bit later on. So now I need to make a choice. What percentage do I want? Uh, it's, not actually the, it's not actually good to always run the highest settings on everything because you could be using way more power than necessary for your body weight and it, it's a matter of you getting out there and playing with your setup but some people who are lighter might find that boost at 20% is just way too much and they can turn it down. I'm a heavy guy, I love the power so I'm going to turn it right up to 20% and I'm going to click save. So now I've got the home screen, it's telling me I've got an assist max. I've got the max power battery, which it tells me it's a 12.6 amp hours, it's 499 watt hours, I've selected high mode for power. My maximum running power is 1455 watts. I've selected 20% boost, and I've got a latency of 330 milliseconds. I could click confirm and it will save all that, but in completion of going through what the app can do, There's also a change latency, which is an advanced feature. I click on that, it brings up a warning saying, you need to understand that you're changing an advanced setting and the implications that has. I need to either con confirm or cancel that. I'm gonna click confirm because I've read it. Again, there's a video here that explains what latency does and it is very important to understand what it does. What latency does is if you're if you've got power on and you're foiling along whoop, and you fall in the water, there has to be a time limit between when the signal is lost from this controller, the box recognizing its lost signal, it adds a time grace period before it shuts the engine down. Now the reason that has to be there is if you're in the water paddling or trying to get on foil and your latency period is too low, let's say we turned it down to 100 milliseconds. That's one tenth of a second, it's not very long. If you lose signal at any point, whether you fall in the water, you're duck diving, or you just put your hand in the water to paddle, if it's too low, the system will constantly cut out and it can become very annoying. Technically, the lower the milliseconds, the safer it is from a per point of view of if you're foiling along at high power and you fall off, the quicker it cuts off, the safer it is in general. But there are practical limits to it being useful. Like I would never run 100 milliseconds personally in the surf because 
I'm duck diving, there's waves coming over the top of me. I actually personally find it safer to run somewhere like 330 to 350 milliseconds, something like that, because I know that I'm gonna duck dive or fall off and go into water and I still want the motor to run a little bit so the motor's not constantly cutting in and out. So it's a personal preference thing. Um, if you run it at half a second, you can't go any higher than that. That's actually getting on the borderline of it just running too long. So I would always err on the side of caution, running it at a shorter period and work your way up to find your safe limit. There are other things like if you've got a, a young child on a big SUP learning to foil, they're clearly not gonna have signal issues standing on a big board. You could turn the latency right down to a low setting and run that. And as soon as they fall off in the water within a hundredth, sorry, within a tenth of a second or hundred milliseconds, that system's gonna shut off whether they've got the finger on the throttle or not. So it is a usable, selectable thing and it's necessary to understand what it does. So I'm gonna save that. And you can see the latency figure has been changed on the screen here. And now I click confirm. It says connection lost because I spent so long talking there. So I'm gonna reconnect. It does time out for safety reasons. So in, there we go. It reconnected, it saw the settings I put in there and it has now saved that stuff. It says ready to fly, you're good to go. I click done and it goes back to the home screen. It's important to remember that the app has some default values. For example, the latency or cutoff time is default is 330 milliseconds. So for example, let's say you're playing around with that and you're putting that time up to 500 milliseconds because you're prone paddling and you want a little bit more time and you've just set your system to high and zero boost and then you go, oh, I didn't like that. I want to try high power and 10% boost. When you go back through the app, you would need to go back into latency and take it from the default 330 milliseconds up to the 500 and rewrite it. The box is kind of a bit dumb. It doesn't know what you did last time. It will remember what you saved last time provided you don't connect with the app and update it. But as soon as you wanna to connect to the app and you wanna change anything, if you're changing anything that's default like latency, you need to remember to go back and change that. So that's for safety reasons. 330 milliseconds is a good all round number, but if you're playing with that setting, you do need to remember to go back and change that. For boost and for power settings, again, you just have to go through that process and select what you want each time. Luckily it doesn't take that long, it's pretty quick, but remember it's up to you to remember what you want to select. So I'm just going to do another real quick run through because now I don't have to do the permissions. So get started, scan the drive, boom, scan the battery, boom, await for connection, Got connection, set up four-wheel drive. I'm gonna go for medium this time. Click confirm, I want 10% boost. Close enough, save, confirm. I don't need to redo my latency because I've already done that and I'm happy with that setting. And I'm going to have a programmed four-wheel drive, bang. That took, I don't know, 30 seconds. Doesn't take very long. So I think that sums it up. Um, that's the app, version one, it's our first Release. it'll always improve over time. We are open to feedback, comments, and constructive input, and we'll see what we can do in the future. Thank you for listening to me. I know this is a long video, but is the typical foil drive way we try and provide lots of content, lots of detail, trying to make it easy for people to understand. Um, but yeah, sorry for the long videos. Get out there, have fun in your system, and thanks for listening. Cheers. <laughs>